Today we'll explore key wrapping as it relates to a hardware security key and the FIDO U2F specification. Hello everyone, this is Rick with Cybermedics. Key wrapping is a method used by YubiKey to dynamically generate private public key pairs. This allows the hardware security key to store an infinite number of accounts for FIDO U2F. We'll walk you through the registration process, the authentication process, show you the validation phase that has to occur, and then finally complete the authentication process with the hardware key. When you start the registration process, you log in an account database. The account database says, yes, you're in the system. You select, you want to register a key through the security settings for the particular relying party or service provider. Once you say you want to register a key, it sends the app ID to the hardware security key. A random number nonce is generated along with an embedded master key. This master key is from the factory set inside and never leaves the hardware security key and never changes. Those three inputs are sent into a hash-based message authorization code HMAC. In this case, it's using SHA-256. The output of that generates the private key and a corresponding public key. That private key along with the app ID and embedded master key are all hashed together. And the output of that is the message access code along with the nonce is sent back to the service provider in the form of a key handle. In addition, the public key is also transmitted and registered with the relying party website or service provider. Once the registration process is complete and you want to go into the authentication of the key to the account, you'll log in again if you're in the database and you've registered a key. The relying party will generate a challenge and transmit the challenge along with the key handle back to the hardware security key. At that point, the hardware security key has to validate the information it is receiving from the service provider. So how is that information validated? The process is the app ID that was previously stored on the website or relying party, along with the nonce stored by the service provider, is hashed along with the master key to dynamically generate the private key. And this is what allows an infinite number of accounts to be put on a hardware security key. Each of these keys can be dynamically generated based on the information that was stored over here by the service provider. That private key along with the app ID and the embedded master key are all hashed again and that is what represents the message access code. So this message access code has been dynamically generated. It's going to then validate and compare it to what was put on the service provider site. If those are valid, then you can proceed on. At this point, the hardware security key has validated that the information stored by the relying party is valid. The next phase is the website has to determine that the security key is valid for authentication back to the account. Okay, so now that we've validated the website's information, we proceed on with allowing the hardware security key to prove it's valid. So what's gonna happen is that dynamically generated private key is gonna be used to encrypt the challenge that was received from the relying party. That encrypted challenge is also gonna be combined with something called a test of user presence and counter plus one that is a safeguard against keys being cloned. Each time the key is authenticated to an account, a counter plus one is incremented. If that counter is not synchronized, then the key will be disabled from authenticating to the account. So the encrypted challenge and the test of user presence is then transmitted. The previously registered public key will be used to decrypt the challenge. The test of user presence will be validated against the counter if all of that is correct then you will be authenticated to the account. As we stated earlier, this relates to FIDO U2F, also considered FIDO1. There is a follow-on FIDO2 specification that allows for passwordless credentialing. In that case, the hardware security key is storing something called a resident key, and that resident key 
takes up memory on the device. And in particular for YubiKey Series 5, there is a limit of 25 of those resident keys that can be stored on a particular key. That's a wrap on hardware security key wrapping. Please like, subscribe, and share our content. This supports our efforts in helping others with technology and have a great and wonderful automation day.